Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. So, my name is John, if you don't know me. I'm church warden here, I'm one of the worship musicians, and I'll be leading the service today um, as Steve is away, and Helen will be preaching for us. It really is lovely to see you here, whether it's your first time or you're here every single day of the week, you are equally welcome. So thank you for coming to worship and welcome to those online. We hope that the transmission is coming out adequately. So it is the second Sunday after Easter, uh, of Easter. Third, I have my autocorrect here. <laughs> so we look forward to worshipping together. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so... <coughs> Is that too loud, people? What do you think? It's fine. It's too loud. I think the synthesis is perhaps slightly lower. But anyway, thank you, Rachel, for stepping in at the back. So, as usual, it's the bits in yellow that we say together. Okay, so, Alleluia, Alleluia. I'm the first and the last, says the Lord, and the living one. I was dead... And behold, I am alive forevermore. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Okay. I think most of the things you need to know are in the notice sheet. They're at the back if you haven't got one, if you want to collect one. Just one thing I'd like to highlight as we have the annual uh, general meeting next year, church council, in, within the service, the report is available at the back if you would like one prior to that service. Okay. I don't think there's any other notices. Ah, and regarding PCC, church wardens, <laughs> um, there are nomination forms at the back if you want to get consent for any further proposals, so please do take those forms if there is anyone else you want to propose. Yes. Come on up. Come on up. Um, hang on. People need to hear you. So, no, no. We, we, we keep it. A brief announcement is always welcome. D Day 80, the 6th of June this year. It's 80 years since D Day, and Hillmorton branch of the Royal British Legion are organising two events in conjunction with St John the Baptist Church. On the morning. It's a community hub, which we're going to transform into a D-Day-themed community hub with some decorations, some entertainment, cream scones and tea cakes I've persuaded Steve to do. In the evening, we are going to do a sunset service at the War Memorial, gathering at quarter to nine for a nine o'clock service, which Ted is going to lead for us. And we will light tea lights at the end of the service to light the memorial in honour of those 4,000 plus casualties um, who suffered on D-Day. If you're able to knit, I have a spare red wool and the knitting pattern for knitting poppies. The WI have very kindly agreed to collect all the poppies that are knitted and to do a cascade and decorate the war memorial for D-Day 80. So if you can help or if you can make a note of those dates... Thank you very much. Thank you. So people can see you after the service. Will you be rushing off? No? Great. So if you have any questions about that, that great event, please do make contact afterwards. Okay. We reflect. We know we're weak. And we cannot keep a perfect faith and live a perfect life. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes, as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. 
We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. So, we're going to have our sung part of the worship now. If you'd like to stand, we've got a nice traditional hymn, lovely language, theology, and that will move on to some more modern songs. And I've passed the baton, you know which one it is. sang this last week. Hope you remember, those of you who are there, and um, we're going to enjoy singing it again today. The words are, are great. Our hope in life or death is Christ alone. What is our hope? In life and death, Christ alone, Christ alone, what is our own in confidence that our souls to Him belong, who holds our days within His hands, who comes apart from His command, and what will keep 
What truth can calm the troubled soul? God is good, God is good. Where is His grace and goodness known? In a great Redeemer's blood, who holds our faith when fears arise, who stands above the stormy trial. The waves that bring the sky unto the shore, the rock of Christ. Oh, sing hallelujah! Our hope springs eternal. Oh, sing hallelujah! Now and ever we. Unto the grave, what shall we sing? Christ, he lives, Christ, he lives, and what reward will heaven bring? Everlasting life with him, that we will rise to meet the Lord.
It's really lovely, isn't it, to walk up the churchyard and see those blossoms, that archway greeting us, like God's banner of love, or however you want to interpret it, but the beauty of nature. And the sun and the birds tweeting and smells, it's just lovely. And that's nature. And I think it's just so wonderful when we come into church. There's so many ways we can worship. Generally, it's through words and singing and lots of styles of music. Sometimes we have art and quietness and reflection, but we're such a variety of people that we need to be able to express in such a variety of ways. And it's great to do that as a family in love and just accepting each other as we are in Christ. Now, children, we're all children of God, but younger people, I'm afraid we don't have any drama sessions or music and dance and things for you today, but would you like to have a sheet to colour in or not? Okay, it fits on the theme, which Helen will mention later. So we'll get two packs of crayons, okay. Mum, are they allowed felt pens? They won't get it all under clothes. They might, might. okay. (laughs) You're very welcome. You can stay in here and do it if you want on the pews, okay? And if you drop pens and make a noise, it don't matter, all right? Are there any, have I missed any young, younger people? No, I think we're okay, yeah, aren't we? Yeah. Lovely. So, we'll ask you what you think the pitch is about at the end if you'd like to think about it, but there's no pressure. There might be some chocolate. And there might be some chocolate. There will be, there will be. Okay, so. So, let's say our collect for this Sunday together. Risen Christ, you've filled your disciples with boldness and fresh hope. Strengthen us to proclaim your risen life and fill us with your peace to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Um, actually, would you like to stand? We're going to say a full creed today, uh, but it'd be great to stand up as we confess before God, if we feel we can, what the heart of our faith is, what our faith and who our faith is based in. I believe in God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of God and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So we're going to sit down, please. We're going to have two readings now. Um, The scripture references are not on the screen. We're working with a slightly different tool today, but the readers will tell you. So I don't know who, actually, I don't know who's reading. Tina's first. Come on, Tina, quickly. You should be there now. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Tina's in our home group. I know that. And Heather will follow the readings. And then Helen's going to come up and share the word of God that she feels he's put on her heart for us at St. John's today. Ah, Tina, just a moment. Sorry. I take it back. (laughs) The first reading, yes, the first reading is taken from the book of Luke, chapter 24, verses 36b to 48 inclusive. Jesus appears to the disciples. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. 
Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it, because of joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the word of the Lord. Second reading is from Acts, and it follows Peter um, healing the crippled beggar. When Peter saw this, he said to them, Men of Israel, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if it was our own power or godliness we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob the God of our fathers has glorified his servant Jesus. You handed him over to be killed, and you disowned him before Pilate, though he had decided to let him go. You disowned the holy and righteous one and asked that a murder be released to you. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man, whom you see and know, was made strong. It's in Jesus' name that the faith comes that faith comes through him that he has given this complete healing to this man, as you can all see. Now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your leaders. But this is how God fulfilled what he had foretold through the prophets, saying that his Christ would suffer. Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord and that he may send the Christ who has been appointed for you, even Jesus. Fellow Israelites, why does this surprise you? It's an unusual start to reading, isn't it? Because it surely we're wondering, why does what surprise them? Why is Peter addressing the crowd? So the, the part leading up to the passage that Heather just read is quite well known, and the children are actually colouring in um, an example of it. Basically, Peter and John are on their way to the temple. It's the time of prayer one of the times of prayer. At the same time, this lame man is being carried into position. He used to sit every day just at the entrance to the temple court so that he could beg. And he sees Peter and John coming, same as any other people, and he asks them for money. Peter looks at him and says, I don't have any money, but I'll give you what I do have. In Jesus' name, get up and walk. Peter helped him up. It says, instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped up, he walked, he went into the temple courts, leaping and jumping and praising God. And of course, all the people recognised this man. They were used to seeing him begging by the side. They recognised him and they were amazed. And they came running to the man and to Peter and John. <clears throat> and that's the cue for the passage that was read. Peter's platform to speak. 
signs and wonders, as we call them, healing, miracles, when God intervenes miraculously in someone's life, are a great platform for evangelism. In the late 80s, when I was with Youth with a Mission in Holland and I was doing a school of evangelism at the time, somebody from Ichthus Church in London, I haven't heard from them for a while, actually. I don't know if they're still operating, but one of their, the guys came out to speak to us about evangelism. And at that time, even though it had gone out of fashion, they were door knocking around their area where their church was, sort of Peckham, I think, southeast London. And they were offering to pray for people. Um, I'm sure they got many doors shut in their face, but some people responded and welcomed them and agreed that they could pray for them for situations, for something wrong with their body, whatever. And God showed up. God did stuff. And that was a great platform for them, like it was for Peter, for tell, to tell people about Jesus' love for them. And it's a reminder to me, this story, and as I was thinking what I would say today, a reminder to me to pray for people, to offer, to be bolder in asking. Yes, it's, um, we, we do it in church in an acceptable place, if you like. It's part of our services. But really, we, we need to be encouraged. We can pray for people outside of church as well. Even if you don't feel you can pray for the person in front of you, you can say to them, I will pray for you. God is not limited to having to be face to face, although that is very faith building. So this lame man experienced new life and this draws other people to find out more. Easter is still happening at that point. This is after Pentecost now. The Holy Spirit has come. The disciples are um, living and ministering in Jesus' name in the power of the Holy Spirit but Easter is still going on. His life was changed and transformed. This applies to us too. I saw a Facebook post over Easter weekend. It was a picture of a tomb, the empty tomb, and it said, he is risen. And there was a comment from somebody underneath that says, I don't understand why people write about something in the present tense that happened 2,000 or more years ago. Why? Because Easter should be affecting us every day of our lives. On that one day, that event when Jesus rose from the dead, the world changed. Death was defeated. I love the songs we sang on Easter Sunday. In fact, we're going to sing a couple of them next. But things like, your buried body began to breathe. The roaring lion declared, the grave has no claim on me. Thine be the glory Risen, conquering sun, endless is the victory. Thou, O oh, death, has won. Then bursting forth up from the grave, he rose again. Sin's curse has lost its grip on me. These are not just nice words that we like to sing around Easter time. They are the truth. On that first Easter Sunday, there was a fundamental change in the cosmos. Death. Our last enemy was defeated. Life rules. Paul says in Ephesians this, I pray that you may know the hope to which he has called you and his incomparably great power. That power is the same as the mighty strength that he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead. <clears throat> What's Paul saying? He's saying that if you've accepted Jesus Christ as Lord of your life, if you've invited him to live in you, that same power that raised Jesus from the dead is at work in my life and in your life. And that same Holy Spirit that's at work in all of us wants to work through us and be a blessing to others and to the world. So back to the passage. Peter says, because all this crowd had come, don't look at us like we've done anything. This is not our power. And then he says to them, do you know, you were the ones that killed the author of life. But now, by faith in Jesus' name, this man has been healed. What does Peter mean? 
He can't possibly be referring to the faith of the man, but the man wasn't expecting anything. He was just hoping for a few coins, maybe. So Peter must have meant his faith, John's faith. Faith in a particular outcome? I don't think so, no. Faith in the name of Jesus. In that culture, someone's name was really important, and it meant their character, who they were. Who, so this is faith in Jesus' name, Jesus' character, who Jesus was and what Jesus had done. Let's be honest, the disciples' faith was probably pretty high at this point. They'd seen their friend, the, their rabbi that had been with them for over three years, brutally killed and raised back to life. And now the Holy Spirit had come at Pentecost and he'd commissioned them to go and spread the kingdom. We don't have to work ourselves up to feel full of faith to pray for someone because it's not dependent on us, thank God. It's more about who our faith is in. And surely the God who raised Jesus from death is worth having faith in. There's a, there's a Christian singer called Lauren Daigle. I think she's American, but she sings a song. It's a bit about her life and how she's been in the pit. And then she, it says something, but you're still rolling stones today. And God is still rolling stones in my life, in your life, and in those we encounter. <clears throat> now Peter says, now I know you acted in ignorance when you killed the author of life. In fact, it fulfilled all the prophecies. But now is your opportunity to repent. Turn to God so your sins may be wiped out and times of refreshing may come. The Greek word for repent is metanoia and it literally means to turn around 180 degrees. This is the second time Peter's addressed a crowd. The first time is on the day of Pentecost. If you remember, the disciples were speaking in tongues People were saying, you're drunk. And Peter says, no way, it's nine o'clock in the morning. He preached and 3,000 people. And then they say to him, what should we do? And again, he says, repent and be baptized. Now, although it doesn't say baptized here as well as repent, I'm sure it's implied because this was the disciples' constant message in Acts. Repent and be baptized. So just as I just want to challenge you today. If you're a disciple of Jesus Christ, if you've committed your life to follow him and have not been baptised, either as a baby or an adult, then this is a command for you. Jesus says it, Peter says it, Paul says it, and the two main sacraments in our Church of England are baptism and Holy Communion. So just have a think on that. Jesus who had no sin, went to be baptised. How much more should, should we? If you want to speak more about that, please come and see or speak to me or Steve. <clears throat> so Easter can be easy to forget, can't it? We celebrate it for a weekend. We might think about it for the following week while we munch through our Easter eggs. But let's remember, New life springs from death at Easter and it doesn't end on Bank Holiday Monday. It goes on and on. We are an Easter people. Whenever we turn to God, our sins are wiped out and times of refreshing may come, it says. Times of seeing God's power at work in our own lives and in the lives of those around us because of faith in Jesus' name, who he is and what he's done. It's not some sort of deal, if you, if you do this, I'll do that. It's a relationship with Jesus. We turn to God, there's blessing. As we're blessed, that evokes our response. That, in, that leads to more blessing. You know, we all have issues in our lives, don't we, at different times. And God can put his finger on different things that he might want to work on. For me, currently, I think God is challenging me in the whole area of trust, of letting go, of trying to be in control of my little sphere, my life. It's not easy, and God is allowing some challenges to come my way that rock me and call me to choose. Will I trust in my own self-sufficiency and confidence, or will I trust God 
to have his way. Whatever that means, whatever that costs. For, for me, that's part of taking up my cross and following him. Whatever it costs for me to follow Jesus in my life. We're going to watch a short clip now. This is Pat's daughter, Pat who stands at the front singing and praying for us sometimes. Pat's daughter Diane, giving her testimony of something that God did in her life. This is another example of the Easter effect. The same Holy Spirit's power that raised Jesus to life at work in Di's life. Another member of our PCC. I was going to stand here and I was going to tell you about how uh, I first became a Christian and I fell away um, because I didn't have any roots, how I came back to the Lord and I fell away uh, because the cares of the world choked me, how I overcame an addiction and came back to God. I was going to end by telling you that the Lord had restored to me the years the locusts had eaten away and that we may give up on God numerous times but he never gives up on us. But I'm not going to tell you about that. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna, that's history. I'm going to tell you about something God did recently. I'm going to tell you about something, about a miracle that happened on the 6th of December, a month ago today. I've been a smoker. I've been a smoker for 40 years, for as long as I can remember. It's entrenched in my routine, my thoughts, my words. Um, from when I woke up, I needed my nicotine hit and throughout the day. Um, so sometimes it would even uh, keep me from church. I didn't feel condemned. Uh, the, the old line of God wanted people to smoke and put a chimney on their head. It's not very helpful. But, um, but God said, do, do you do what you can do and, and let me worry about what, what, you, what you can't do. Um, and people have been praying for, for me to stop smoking and, and I've been praying. I've been praying for a miracle. I've been praying that, that God would just make it as if I'd never smoked. It's the only way I, I could think of getting rid of 40 years of, of, of routine. Um, so in early December, I had a chest infection. Um, nothing new. I have a lot of chest infections. I've got bad lungs smoking. Um, and I, I was quite breathless. I, I was sitting at my dining room table. Before chest infections have not put me off smoking, not one little bit, I may add, but there I am at the dining room table, rolling myself a cigarette, and in, in my mind, I hear a quiet, yet a very loud voice saying, he that is in you is greater than he that's in the world. He that's in you is greater than he that's in the world. He that's in you is greater than he that's in the world. And I'm thinking, Lord, are you trying to say something? And then I hear, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I've come that you'll have life and have it in its fullness. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I've come you'll have life and have it in its fullness. And I felt God was saying, I'll set you free, die. I'll set you free. If you believe it, dare to believe it. it it's true. Um, no trumpets, no flashes of lightning. I, I wasn't easily convinced. I rolled a cigarette and had a couple of smokes just to wonder if... How, how could this be? And it was like dead paper in my hand, and I knew there and then that, that God had set me free, and I dared to believe it. God gave me the faith to believe it. I didn't smoke for a day. For me, that was epic. A day might as well have been a week. It might as well have been a month, and it might as well have been a year. I, I knew that, that God had set me free. Uh, yeah, God, God basically did a factory reset. Um, he reprogrammed, he restored, and he, he renewed my mind. So I, I haven't smoked for a month, and I won't be smoking again. Um, <laughs> people now ask, how did you do it, Di? How did you do it? What method did you use? What's your secret? And I have to say, I didn't do it. It's an answer to prayer. It wasn't me, God did it. You need to give God the glory for it. My chains fell off, I've been set free. Thank you, Jesus. Really encouraging, isn't it? And 
Di still hasn't smoked, and I'm sure she never will again. And she was even on her own. Um, she'd had prayer ministry. There's going to be prayer ministry available at the end of the service today. It's normally, this is second Sunday, it's normally communion. Steve's away, we're not having communion today, but there will be prayer ministry. So it took a lot of prayer. You know, Di didn't stop going for prayer, but one day God intervened powerfully. Please take up the resource that we have here to come for prayer. You, they'll be willing to pray with you for anything at any time. So remember, we're Easter people. Resurrection life is at work in our lives every day. And we can reach out to others in Jesus' name with that same resurrection power. Lord, thank you for that first Easter day when you rose from death. Father God, thank you that for that mighty power that was at work in Jesus, raising him from the dead. You say that same Holy Spirit power is at work in our lives as we seek to follow you. Lord, help us as we go out from here to um, walk in your ways and to be in touch with what you're saying to us, both for our lives and for those around us. Thank you that Easter is ongoing and that we can walk in the fullness of that every day. Amen. So do stand and join with us as we sing some, some songs that um, pick up this theme and reflect to us about Easter. my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds his hands his feet my Savior on that cursed tree his body
Oh, to see the dawn of the darkest day, Christ on the road to Calvary, tried by sinful men, torn and beaten then, nailed to a cross of wood. This the power of the cross. Christ became sin for us, took the blame for the
Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands and 10,000 times 10,000. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice, they were saying, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honour and glory and praise. Worthy is the Lamb. 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 Lamb. that it pleases you to know us as daughters and sons of the Most High God, maker of all things, Lord of all. For this we praise you with grateful hearts. We praise you for your creation, creatures great and small, for the seasons we enjoy in this country, and especially for spring, when all around us we see signs of new life, Resurrection, with prancing lambs, singing and nesting birds, flowering plants and blossoming trees. For these and so much more we give you thanks and praise, Lord God, creator of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you that we live in a democracy where we can speak openly in disagreement with those in government without ending up in prison. We thank you for the freedoms we take for granted, and in doing so, we do not appreciate many people in many countries cannot oppose or disagree with those in power. And in such conditions, we remember literally millions of Christians around the world who suffer persecution for their faith and love for you. Hear their prayers, Hear our prayers for them, and especially for we pray for the opening doors teams and their prayer for today for Myanmar, 17 people including 11 Christians were killed when the church was bombed by the military in January, and among the dead were some parents who left their children behind. Father, we pray for those, including Open Doors partners, as they seek to help those suffering because of this injustice and tragedy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we continue to pray for an end to all wars, so that parents who fear for their sons and daughters caught up in conflict will fear no more. Lord God, help bring to an end the conflict in Myanmar, Ukraine, Israel, and Sudan, where those who suffer most are children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our Father in heaven, we pray for our two parishes, for our clergy and all those on rotors, everyone who worships here here and at St. Gabriel's, as we seek to be servants of Christ at home, at work, at church, 
Lord, help us to truly be, as Jesus commanded, salt and light, that others will see the love of God even in us. We pray for our AGM next Sunday, that we may be of good hope to look ahead in faith and confidence. And as Helen was reminding us this morning, that your word is alive and active to forgive us our sins, both deliberate and in ignorance. Gracious Father, refresh us by your Holy Spirit. And I suggest as we sit, if you want to, open your palms as if you're wanting to receive from God and just breathe in God's air. As if we're breathing in the very life and spirit of God, which we are in a real sense, that God is present with us now through his risen Son, Jesus Christ our Lord that we may be refreshed as a church, that we may be renewed through the love and the life of Christ as a church. Because God wants to pour out his spirit upon his people who want to receive him. Lord, and we want to receive you. Come to us by the power of your love shown to us in Jesus Christ, your precious and gracious son. Come now, Holy Spirit, and renew us and revive us and give us the joy of your Spirit within our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <coughs> and finally, but not least, we pray for those who are troubled by ill health those who are making a recovery. We pray for Tony Pittman, Ray Carver, Emma Lenton, Mick Bowsden, and indeed, Lord, we pray for, of course, King Charles and Kate, Princess of Wales, that they will respond well to their treatment. And we also pray for those who mourn the family and friends of Sue Clark and Stella Allman as she mourns the loss of her dear son, Andrew. And we're asked to pray this morning for the family of Kevin Baines, Kevin Baines, who died on Friday. We pray for his family and his friends in their great and sudden loss. And may these and others known to us benefit and be comforted in the knowledge of the risen Lord who continues to come among us to bring his comfort and his healing power and his love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you that we know you as Father, such an intimate relationship that we have with the living God and so we say together the Lord's Prayer our Father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Ted. Thank you for leading us. Just before we sing our final hymn, we have a gospel to proclaim. Um, I just wonder if any who have been colouring would just like to come and show us your work and maybe tell us what you think it was all about. No, okay. And nobody else? No. <laughs> I think that there's this one. Could do it through you, Dad? No, no, it's fine. So, what? Oh, wow. Well, I did okay. it too. Hold on a moment. I need for people to hear you. So, what's your name? Maggie. Maggie. Great. So, you hold that, Maggie. Don't eat it, okay? Just that's it, keep it there. 
So, Maggie's, is this both yours or is one yours? Uh, both mine. Two, for the price of one, eh? So, lovely pictures. What are they, Maggie? So, I did one of what, I did one of life and one of what it would have probably looked like. Great. And what is the story in this picture? What have we got? Who are these two chaps here on the right? No, this side. <laughs> Who are those, do you think? Pete. What are they doing? Peter and John. Yeah, Peter and John. And then just in that, under that archway is someone who needs their... Help. Because he was lame, crippled. So what did he ask for, folks? Do you remember? Money. Money. And what did he get? To walk. He got healing. He got healing in the name and through the power of Jesus. So, great, and we didn't even teach you that, did we? We didn't have to send you away and have a little lesson. So well done, Maggie. Thank you very much. There's some chocolate. Helen can sort that, can't you? There's some chocolate or sweets. You can have two items, all right. No, because you did two. But there's also chocolates and sweets for yourself. And is it Tom? You're... Some sweet and chocolates if you'd like for your son. Okay. Okay. Great. So we're coming to the we've come to the final hymn. Here, my, oh, don't, don't throw them away, will you? I can sing the final hymn now, and then Helen's going to close us off. Okay. So, thank you, Rachel. Turn my stuff. We 
Thank you, Lord, for all your goodness and faithfulness to us and these gifts and what come in through the week in many and various ways are just a pale reflection of our offering to you. But Lord, thank you that you take them and use them for your glory and the extension of your kingdom. Amen. Amen. Um, thank you for coming. It's been great to gather together as a family again. Please do stay and join us for coffee and lots of lovely cakes or tea, whichever. And remember that prayer ministry is available. Please take up the offer if you would like to in any way, uh, for any reason. Just make the way over to the side um, while, we, um, while John plays, in fact. Let's say together this closing prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you humbled yourself in taking the form of a servant and in obedience died on the cross for our salvation. Give us the courage to follow you and to proclaim you as Lord and King to the glory of God the Father. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and with those you love this day and always. Amen. So go in love and peace to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen.